deception or truth? How are we going to recognize it? God has made a way through every issue of our life. The Lord wants us to understand the signs and the times that we are living in. How can we tell deception from the truth? God wants to teach us how to look upon the heart of every issue, of every person involved, just as he does. This is how God looks upon us, not the outward, the inward. Amen? So deception, it is all around us. It's even in our churches. Deception has been a key tool of the enemy throughout all of history. There are many forms of deception, fear, sickness, mandates, propaganda, the great facade, the illusions, the deceptions. How do we see through it? So the enemy knows the truth of God. Let me say that again. The enemy knows the truth of God. He knows God's truth will always stand. It will never fail. The question is, do we know his word is true? And how deeply do we understand this, especially when times are hard? The enemy counterfeits truth. That is what deception is about. So the word occult means hidden. The enemy has always had to cloak his plans because if he did not, we would see right through his lies. And much of the word of God is also a mystery for this very same reason. It is for us to go deeper with God and allow God super to enter into our natural. God within us will reveal to us the wisdom of the ages, and it is him that we are to focus our attention on. God tells us in the book of Revelation what is going to happen in the end. The book of Revelation, these are Jesus's words to us. But the devil has also read the book of Revelations. He absolutely knows how it is all going to end. He knows his time is short because he understands the signs, the times, and the seasons. We are to know this from the word of God. But we have available to us the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. With the Holy Spirit, each of us are filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual understanding. If we look at all that is going on in the physical world around us, it's very easy to become discouraged if we do not have physical, spiritual understanding. How can we enter the spiritual battle in the physical if we cannot spot the truth from deception. We have to understand there is always a spiritual agenda to everything we see, hear, and concerns us. Everything takes place in the spiritual before the physical. And this is why it is so important for us to go deeper with God, pray with God, prophesy from God, all that God is doing. This is part of harvesting. What we see physically happening around us is a result of the spiritual battles around us. For example, have you ever wondered what is really the big deal about Israel? It's such a small piece of land. It is known as the lowest place of the world. Everyone, like globally, has a say in this piece of property. They want to take it over. They want to build their shrines on it. They want to divide this land. Or some just simply want to blow it off the map. What's the big deal? And the neighbors around Israel, they just never seem to like the Jewish people. And how long has this been going on? The battle for Israel is not about the Jewish people, but about their Jewish God. Why? Because Jesus 
will return there to take out the Antichrist. All the wars, all the rumors of wars that we hear is a spiritual battle to thwart the return of Jesus. And we see the big facades that cover this all up. Who did this? Who didn't do this? We have to see through the illusion and get to the heart of really what's going on. Yet many people don't understand this. They don't understand how to do this. And it brings stress and anxiety to them. If you look at Israel right now, can you tell that this battle has already been won? Absolutely not. We know without doubt, God is God and his prophetic word will never be unfulfilled. When we see the things that are happening in our own countries, we have to go to the word of God. What is the bottom line here? Because distraction, propaganda is one of the great deceptions of the enemy. It's to take our focus off of what is really going on. So we will not be deceived by what we see when we know the truth. Pilate asked Jesus a question. What is truth? John 18, 37. Jesus replied, to this end was I born. And for this cause came I into the world that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. The reason why people do not want Jesus to return, they do not want to be convicted of the truth. They want to rebel. They want to live without judgment, but they are deceived, not understanding that this will be their eternal outcome. So whenever we want to know what the truth is, we have to look to the word of God. We have to hear the voice of Jesus. Deception is recognized outside of the word of God. Truth is in our innermost being. So if you don't know the word, if you don't know the Holy Spirit, how are you ever going to know the truth? When you pick up that book, that book knows everything about you. The author of the book, he will minister to each of us every time we read it. If we are not living in the word, listening to the Holy Spirit, how will you persevere through the times ahead? Hosea 4, 6, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. These are not unbelievers that don't read the Bible. These are my people perish for a lack of knowledge. These are God's people who have the Holy Spirit, knowledge unlimited on the inside of them, perishing for a lack of knowledge. Satan's kingdom is in this world. It doesn't stop. But if we go by what we see now in the physical, it can be very overwhelming and sometimes even horrific. I mean, we're seeing things happening in the world now that we never thought we would see. But if we understand the battle with the king, the gates of hell will not prevail against us. Amen. Are we taking the word of God seriously? The word does not say if we believe in Jesus, that he died for our sins on the cross and rose from the dead, that we can continue to sin and get away with it. That is deception. The enemy continues with religion to twist the scriptures. In fact, the word tells us right out straight, if we do certain things and we're not stopping, have no intention of stopping, and we're not repenting, that we will not enter the kingdom of God. We are not to be deceived because God is not mocked. So what the word does say is if you love me, you will keep my commandments. When we first get saved, we become the righteousness of God. We're in right standing with God. This is step one. But Jesus told us to follow him. We are to become like him. He is holy. Once we have committed our lives to Christ, it's our job to live holy as he is holy. So Ephesians 4.24 says, we are to put on the new man, which was created according to God, in true righteousness 
and holiness. It doesn't say God does this. It says we are to put on the new man, the holiness of God. As I said many times before, when you get saved, that's when you learn how to act as if you're in heaven right now. Amen. Because spiritually, we are a spiritual being living only a carnal and earthly life. We don't want that. We want all that God has for us. Amen. We are spiritual beings. We thank God for the ability to pray. But even as believers, we can be deceived. Even with the Holy Spirit, we can still be deceived. We have to stay in the word of God with the body of Christ. So let's really make a decision. We're going to follow Jesus. We want to be like him. And to do that, we have to be obedient. We have to be reverent. We have to be holy as he is holy. All these armies, all these bombs, all this equipment, Jesus is going to overtake it all with a breath. So let us reverence the Lord in holiness. JesusTodayMinistries.org. We are here to minister and to pray with you right in the comfort of your own home or your office. If you are seeking counseling, healing, deliverance, financial breakthrough, if you feel that there is a block or you're experiencing hindrance in your blessings, please know that God cares about you and all that concerns you. Hi, my name is Peggy Golden. I am a pastor and I have a master's in Christian counseling. God has made a way for people all over the world to receive counsel, healing, and deliverance through the use of technology right in your own homes. God heals, saves, and delivers his people every hour of the day. There is no distance for God. If you do not know God, if you are seeking him, or if you have found yourself in a situation that you need help getting out of, please know nothing is too hard for God. Please visit my website at jesustodayministries.org. You can get to know more about me there. And please remember to read the testimonials of what others have experienced by contacting this ministry. There is no fee, but you are able to make a donation. For those who are in the States as well as international clients, we can use voice or video chat on Skype, WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, or Viber. I look forward to praying with you and all that God will do.